Hello, it's Erica here from Me To You Paper Crafts, coming to you with another fun fold card for Friday, March the 6th. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this video may be a little long, although I have done a lot of the prep ahead of time. Um, so we'll see how we go. You can certainly feel free to fast forward any parts if you happen to know, you know what you're doing, then that's fair enough. Anyway, let's get on to the card. So I was browsing the internet looking for a new front fold and came across a card made by Jen Brown. This is not the exact card. I actually used a completely different stamp set and different um, colors. But this is the one that I made up for my prototype. And it is called, well she called it I think a, a fancy W card or a W fancy fold card. Um, and it was because of how the inside is. But to me, when you hold it like this, doesn't that more look like a, an M rather than a W? So I'm not quite sure why she called it a W full card, but she, she did a lovely job. She is, uh, she's um, out of Britain and she is very precise with everything she does. So she does an amazingly beautiful, beautiful job. So I decided to make the same fold and just do something different. So I used the Little Ladybug. I'm just mad about this stamp set. This is the host set for this year's 2020 celebration. So it's in the back of the mini brochure. So you can earn this for free. With a fairly large order though, you need to place an order minimum $375. So most people that when they spend that kind of money, they may decide to gather some orders from their crafting friends or they'll host a party with me and then we'll just have a fun afternoon or an evening making some cards and then having their guests order, place an order. And so then the hostess can earn this for free. Very, very fun set. And then uh, Stampin' Up! also during Celebration came out with some matching dies. They're called the Ladybug dies. And so I have those dies so that you can cut out these beautiful images. So it just makes it very versatile and lots of different things that you can do with it. So that's what I used for this card. And so let me just show you some details. So I decided to create this, you know, front bit. It's a birthday card. I've got lots of girlfriend birthdays coming up. Um, and the ladybugs are just too cute, beyond cute. Uh, so I made kind of a little scene on the front, and then inside there's this uh, M fold, and so I put panels to show you the different kinds of ladybugs. This card or this fold uh, really works well for any stamp set that has, you know, different kinds of images. And then this last one I put here just so that you could just say a little something. I mean, the front says happy birthday, but you can put your little greeting on the back here. So not a lot of room for a greeting. You could, if you wanted to, put something on the back, a back panel, but I chose to do it like this. Uh, Jen did lots of multiple layers. My next card has a few extra layers on here, but I made this one just because it was my prototype. Just a basic card base with one layer um, and just a couple of layers on the front. Um, and I still think it turned out great. And the thing is, is that you're going to add ribbon because you want to uh, perhaps hold it close. I don't think it really needs a closure. Um, and it still fits in an envelope, um, a regular A2 size card envelope. But the ribbon, I guess, is a nice accent if you want to add ribbon. I will be adding ribbon on the second card just to show you how to do it. So let's get started with that. I think it's a very, very cute card. A lot of work, so but a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun making it. Now, what made it fun and, and well actually what made it easy was the fact that rather than cutting out these squares I used the layering squares framelits. I have mine on a, um, a magnetic sheet and I color coded them so that I could match up the scalloped one with the plain one. Some of these are missing because they're here that I used them on this card um, and so and I made a template on the back. So I can see that the mat, the blue, the turquoise, the darker turquoise, blue, purple, etc. Just to be able to match up the plain square with the scallop square. So that's how I do all of my framelits. And I think I did a video. If you look at my YouTube channel from Me Too Paper Crafts, I'm pretty sure I did a video on on how I organize my dies, so that you can take a look at that. 
Um, as usual, I will have a blog post link in my YouTube description down below so that all of the measurements will be there. And there are a lot of uh, pieces. So I won't give you the measurements as I go through the video. And I've already pre-cut a lot of things for you just to shorten the video. So basically you start, you choose your colors, and I decided to go with um, sea foam. sorry, I was going to say sea foam spray. Is it sea foam spray? Let me pull it down. Oh my gosh, that label is so light I can't even read it. I think it's called sea foam spray. Um, and pear pizzazz as my colors. And I pulled out the DSP, the 6x6 DSP paper pack for the Subtles cards to pull out the sea foam spray. Um, if that's the wrong name for the color, it will be on the, uh, on the blog post. So basically what you have here is a card base. It's a regular card base. It's, you know, eight and a half by 11 and you're going to cut it at four and a quarter. And then you're going to score it in the middle at five and a half to get your card base. And then I did uh, my top layer. I decided to go with, uh, I decided to go with a couple of different layers. I decided to use the pear pizzazz. Um, let's pull this out of the way. Uh, the pear pizzazz as a layer. They're all cut a quarter inch smaller. And then I decided to use the other set of framelits. I love these. These are the stitched rectangle framelits. I use these all the time. I love them. They're good for greetings and for layering pieces. So those are really handy. Um, and so I made these two pieces here. So one with the seesaw side spray and white, whisper white. I haven't designed the front yet. We're going to, you know, I'm going to fly by the seat of my pants for that as we move along. So those are the layers for the front of the card. So you can do as many layers or as few layers as you want in designing your card. For the inside of the card, I chose to do a couple of layers. Unlike the um, ladybug one, I decided to go with a layer of the pear pizzazz and then a layer of the gingham side of the paper and another layer here. Now, you need these on both sides of the card. Typically, we only do one side of the card, but you need these because this is where you thread or you put your ribbon. Your ribbon is going to lay... No, I, I that's not true. Um, you, you lay your ribbon on the front. So you do need something on the front of your card, layers on the front of your card. Um, and I'll show you what I did for the back of this card. I didn't want to put a bunch of layers. Jan had put a few layers on the back, but I just cut an extra piece of basic black, just an eighth of an inch smaller to hide the ribbon. That's all I did for that. All right, so you need your two layers in the front, and then you need a strip. This is one inch by 11, and I'm going to tell you where to score this. This will also be on the blog, and this is what makes the W, or the M. Um, okay, and then I already pre-cut um, a lot of my squares. So on this seafoam spray, I'm going to do uh, pear pizzazz. And then I did a piece of the DSP on there. Again, I flipped it over to do the writing side. And then I've got, I already did these cakes. Oh, I should show you the stamps that we're using. Okay, so I did these cakes to put on here. So I'll show you that as we go along. And then the last one, I'm just saying, enjoy every crumb. So these little cakes and this lovely little greeting comes from a stamp set called Piece of Cake. It's a great birthday set, as well as a wedding set, because it has happy birthday greetings, um, and it has uh, some wedding greetings, Mr. and Mrs. Cut the Cake. So lots and happy birthday. And then it's got some cake toppers here that you can use. And the best thing is, is it coordinates with what's called the cake builder punch. So you can punch out the cake and you can punch out a cake stand, which we're going to do. I already did one out of silver and then I actually just used, um, I used my stylus and put little holes in. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I just dented it a little bit just to give it a pattern. So we'll do a few more of these and put them on all of the cakes on the inside of the card. Okay, 
For the framelits, now if you count the framelits from the smallest to the largest, these are numbers four, five, and six. So you start with the smallest count out. So this is four, five, and six, okay? And then it's easy just to cut out these pieces using the framelits. Okay. So I'll set those aside because we don't need them because I've already done most of my work here. So I think we'll start with layering uh, these pieces on the inside. So I'm going to um, do some taping. Now I want to bring out my silicone mat if I can find it. I always use my silicone mat whenever I'm um, using my tape runner because I don't like to get tape on my on my mat, which is actually all askew and it's getting a little ratty from all the creating I've been doing this week. So we want the gingham on the outside. So we're just going to run some tape runner low on this piece. Now I think I've shown you this trick before where I like to line it up with my grid paper. So it's really worth getting this pad of grid paper because it's easy to line up your paper. So I'm looking for halfway between the quarter inch squares. Okay, some people really have a difficult time layering, me included. I think I've told you in the past, I have astigmatism. So all the pictures in my house are crooked. And that's just the way it is. And we'll do this one. I don't know how long I'll do these fun fold videos for you. I guess when I run out of fun folds, but I keep coming across, I came across three more today that looked very interesting. I think one of them I've done before. Um, but I just think they make your cards um, a lot more interesting, especially after you've been card making as I have for many, many years. You want something a little bit more interesting. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I think all of my recipients kind of expect them to be a little bit more detailed than what I've done in the past, just because I'm more experienced now. They're kind of demanding. Okay, so here is our card base, and I can put these in here. Okay, so this part is fairly simple. As long as you, when you have all your pieces cut ahead of time, it goes together pretty fast. So this color is hard to work with because it's so light, but I'm just lining up that score line on there and then the top. There we go. And again, I'm going to line that up in the halfway mark for those squares. I don't see them very well on the right side, but I think I'm good. Now remember, your, this tape runner is not an exceptionally strong tape, not like our Terran tape or Tombow glue, but I still like to use it. It's kind of fast and easy, but the trick is to burnish it, is to really rub that tape in there, but don't rub it until you know that your card is nice and straight. That's the key thing, because it does come off quite easily. So we'll do this panel. So after you've watched this video and you get an idea of how it basically works, then sit down and plan out your, pick a stamp set and plan out your design. There's lots of stamp sets with different images that would work well on those little square panels. Okay, now I think we'll do the ribbon part. So the ribbon I've chosen, um, I know I had it out somewhere. It's the white ribbon with the silver edge. Did I put it away? Nope, it's not up there. Okay, maybe we won't do the ribbon right away. My, you can't imagine what my desk looks like. Stuff is everywhere. 
no, can't find my ribbon right now. So let's hold off on that until I eyeball it. Um, but to be honest, even if my desk was 100% clear, I probably wouldn't find it. Okay. Let's score this. All right, so I have my scoring measurements right here because I need them. So I'm going to pull out my scoreboard. I really need to find that ribbon. Okay, let's pull out my scoreboard. So this is 1 inch by 11, and I'm going to score this at uh, 2 and 3 quarters. Five and a half and eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter. Okay? It's basically half and then half again. If you don't want to use the scoreboard, it's pretty easy to fold. Okay, let's put that away. Okay, so it's half. This is where you're making your M. Make sure you've got it all lined up. You may want to use a bone folder just to burnish that edge a bit. And then you're going to go this way, fold it this way. Don't worry too much about Mountain Valley, Mountain Valley for these little fiddly bits. Just make sure they're nicely, you know, lined up. Okay, so what you want to do is you will take the center piece and find the center of the card here. Now, I'm going to tell you that you can position this, you know, wherever you want. I centered mine. Let me just pull it out again. So mine is centered, but you could position it a little bit lower and have these lower and then you could have other greetings or one greeting along the top or you could make it a little bit higher and another idea is these don't have to be put on straight you could put one high one low one high one low right you got lots of versatility there do whatever floats your boat at the time so what I'm going to do is fold this over and make sure you can fold the card okay that's a good test. Then I'm going to pull out my Tombow glue. I have two on the go here, and I know I'm running out. And I'm going to put some Tombow on here. I don't do a lot of measuring. You could measure to find the center if you want. I'm just going to try and figure that out and make sure I can close this, okay, and just go like this. You know what, I think I've done that wrong already. I have, because this piece is supposed to pop out. I've made a boo-boo. I've made a boo-boo. Okay, I'm going to stop the video and go cut another piece. I'll be right back. Okay, I have another strip here and I've scored it. Now that was a terrible boo-boo to do, so don't do as I did because now this is all sticky. And um, I'm going to have to wait for this to dry and then I'm going to take out my glue eraser and get rid of it and clean it up. So uh, that was a mistake. So we're not going to work on this right now. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and come back to it. I apologize for that. Um, that's why you make a prototype, so that you learn your mistakes, but I guess maybe I should have made two or three or four cards before I did a video, but that's okay. So this is going to be for the front of the card. I'm not sure what I'm designing yet, but I think I can feel pretty confident. We're going to do the ribbon underneath this. So I think I feel pretty confident, but I have a, just already another idea. You could do the ribbon over this and under this. So, okay, let's set this aside for a second. This is what happens when you design on the fly. Just go with me, guys. Go with me. What we'll do now is we will layer, glue up our layers here, okay? So for the inside, I have four of these pear pizzazz squares, okay? And 
I have four of the Seaside Spray squares. Oh no, this is the DSP. This is so faint. Now there is some print on here and oh my gosh, I can't read it. I know there's a right side and a wrong side or an up, you know, you want to orient it the right way, but I don't think anybody's going to notice and I certainly can't tell in this light which is up and which is down. So we're going to glue these on and then we're going to take our cakes and glue them on top like this, okay? Um, I colored these with, I stamped these, um, I did a couple of basic black, and then I did this one in pear pizzazz, I don't know why, why, but that's how it happened. And then I colored them with my blends, Seaside Spray and uh, Rococo Rose. Those are the colors that I used. And then this will be for the greeting at the end. So let's just, where's my silicone mat again? And let's take out my tape runner. Make sure I do this on the right side of the paper. Yeah. Feel free to fast forward through this bit if you want. Now I'm not going to use my grid paper for this. I think I can eyeball it. And I'm going to show you what I think I'm going to do with the cake stand. This tape runner gets a bit gooey. And now it's stuck on my finger. I just wanted to check to make sure I remembered to press play or record. I've done that before. Okay, that's one. This is the next one. Orient this the right way. I think I'll be a bit mortified tomorrow morning when there's better light in here and I see that I've got the paper upside down. These cakes are so sweet. Here's another one. I don't know if you can see in the video, but I did do some Wink of Stella on the cakes too. Make them a bit sparkly. What is that on there? I normally don't talk too much about my personal life, but I think this is an important message to get out to everybody. I went and had a shingle, my first of two shingles shots today because a friend of mine got shingles and, um, and it's terrible and she is suffering and so we had talked about it about a year ago about going to get our shingles shot. My husband had gone and had his done and he kept saying to me, oh Erica you need to go and get your shingles shing shingles shot it's kind of hard to say I said yeah yeah I'll get around to it and uh, I didn't and um, neither did she and now she's uh, suffering and it's and then since then I've been hearing all kinds of horrible stories about shingles so um, I think they say if you're over 50 yeah go and get that shot 
So I've got it today and then um, in two months, between two and six months or two and four months, can't remember now, but certainly after two months, my pharmacist said he's got me on his calendar and he'll phone me in two months to go for the second shot. And it was really no big deal. Um, okay, here we go. Well, no big deal. It was kind of expensive because I don't have a, a plan anymore. I used to have a great plan when I was working full time, but not anymore. So it was kind of expensive. So I won't be going shopping for a bit now. Okay, those are done. Now, how is my... Now, for the front, what am I going to do for the front? I'm going to do another... Oh, okay, let's see. Now, what have I done with that little cake plate? Oh, I found my ribbon. Ha ha! Found my ribbon. It was underneath the framelits, which I'm going to throw out of the way. So that's a good thing. Now I have to find the little um, cake plate that I had cut out already. See, I touched that on my desk. Put the stylus away. Here's the cake plate. Let's put this away. Okay, I've lost it. So maybe I need to check the floor. Nope, not on the floor. Okay, we're just going to do another one. Okay, so I have a piece of um, silver foil. I'm going to take out my um, excuse me, cake builder punch and I'm just going to put it in where excuse me, the cake stand is. And I'm going to do three cake stands for now. I think I'll want one for the front of the of the card. I'm not sure yet. So there we go. That's three cake stands. And I thought they would be cute on, you know, hanging off the bottom of the square like that. I think that will be kind of cute. Now, how I made those, I took out my stylus and I just put this on my silicone mat and I'm using the smaller end of the stylus and I just pressed some little polka dots in there just to give it some interest. So that's one. I'm trying to be random here. Two. Three. Okay. Then I'm going to use my Tombow glue. Oh, did I just find, yeah, I just found the other one. I'm finding everything. Which I guess is a good thing, but I wish I didn't lose it to begin with. Okay, there's a little bit of glue on there. And I'm going to turn it this way. And put this on the cake. I could have put a bit more glue at the bottom there, but this Tombow's pretty strong. Okay, so there's one. This is the second one. Try and wipe off the glue so that you don't have any gobs on there. And with when you're working with foil, really try not to get any Tombow on top of the foil because it ruins it. It gives it a very dull finish. So make sure your fingers are nice and clean. Okay, this is the third one. Just a tiny, tiny bit of glue is all you need. I should have a baby wipe out.
Okay. So those are my four panels or three cake panels for the inside of the card. Now for the front, now there was another cake, I've got them all on blocks here, there's a really fancy, oh, I think it's this one I wanted to use, it's got flowers on it. Is this the one I wanted to use as the last cake? There's one that says happy birthday on it, but I'm going to do a happy birthday I think on the front of the card. Yeah, there's my happy birthday. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to stamp it in Rococo Rose. Let me pull that down. No, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want Rococo Rose. Hang on. I want the green because there's a cute little floral topper. This is it here, floral topper. Um, and I want that on the top of the cake. So I'm going to do this actually in the green, the dark green, the pear pizzazz green. Let's do pear pizzazz green. Um, when you're doing the punch, watch the orientation of the cake. So the fat part of the cake is at the bottom. So I like to put this at the bottom of my of my card stock so that I can easily punch it out. Okay, so there's that. Now let's uh, just close this for a second before I get ink everywhere. And let's close the pear pizzazz up. Um, now I want to color this before we move on. So I'm going to leave it white, I think, just to save time. But the little flowers, let's add a bit of uh, Rococo Rose. I'm just going to use the light color. And when I have tiny, tiny places to color, I don't really color, I, I, I dab with the blunt end, the bullet end of the marker. And if you dab, I think you get way more control than trying to color. I usually color in circular, um, circular motion. I think my glasses are really dirty. can't see a thing. I normally don't film. Um, it's around four or five o'clock here in the afternoon and it's dark. I normally like to film in the morning when there's more light, so that's why I'm struggling here. So I apologize for that, but I had a, a busy day. I met a friend for coffee this morning, and then later on I went and had my flu shot, and then I did a few groceries. So um, I think I'm happy with that. I think I'll put my wink still on when um, it's done. So let's punch this out. Oh, I really like that, those two colors together, Rococo Rose and Pear Pizzazz. I like that. Okay, so there's my cake. I don't need that extra cake stand that I punched out. Okay, now what I'm going to do is let's, let's design my cake now. So, um... I just remembered I was going to do this in silver too late now. Um, so if I put my cake, let's bring out that found um, cake stand, but it didn't dent very dark, very deep. So I'm going to re-dent it. There we go. And um, okay. Now, I think I better layer these first before I add my cake, because I might put my cake or the stand on dimensionals. So let's do this. I love these rect. I love all the framelits. You know, I, I just love the framelits, especially all the stitch framelits Stampin' Up! is coming out with. They're just great. They add a little extra detail. To your designs. Now let's try and center this eyeball it if I can. 
I hope it's straight and not crooked like the pictures in my house. Now, I have another idea. Let me just see. Oh, this is going to be sticky for a long time. Let me just think about this for a sec. This is the front of my card. I'll put it on my silicone mat and it won't stick to that. That's another good thing about the silicone mat. I'll stick that on there like that. Okay. So I could do that. Um, now what I didn't cut is another layer for this, which I'll have to go and do because I'm going to thread my ribbon. I think it'll look nice with the silver edged ribbon because I've got silver cake stands. But, you know, I could put the ribbon um, on, under here, here and under here. I wonder what that would look like. Should we try it? Okay, so I'm just going to pause you now and I'm just going to go cut another piece of cardstock, an eighth of an inch smaller. All right, so I have this extra piece of cardstock to hide the ribbon. Um, now, I think I'm going to try that trick. What the heck? So, we're going to tape this down, this first layer down. Now, this is way easier to read the writing and have it the right way up. So, let's put this on. Oop, that's upside down. Don't ask me what it says. It's pretty tiny writing, but let's just get this on here. Okay. Put the stylus away. Now, what I want to do is grab the ribbon again. So I need, and I don't necessarily tie a, you could tie a bow, but it's got to fit in your envelope. So usually I just, you know, knot it a bit. This might be a bit, I might cut this. It's a bit long. You know, if you just tie it, it's just to keep it together. It's an added interactivity for your recipient. And I'll, I think I'll just tie, cut those a little shorter. But you don't want a bow if you're going to mail it. Again, I'm going to eyeball this in the middle of the card. So, uh, again, I don't need it that long, I don't think. Now, again, your grid paper comes in pretty handy because I want to get it straight. Let's hope this thing doesn't stick too badly on here. So let's just line this up on the grid paper here. like that and then I'll do my ribbon maybe here I'm just using these lines left and right now rather than fiddling with tear and tape or glue dots or tape runner because this is going to be covered up I'm just going to use simple old scotch tape I have scotch tape in my craft room. I do use it a lot for putting down ribbon. Why does that look crooked? That's crooked. There we go. And then we'll do a piece over here. Come so. Now I'm going to take my back panel and I will adhere that. Adhere that. It's a funny word, eh? Adhere here. Okay. Yeah, see, it's still sticky. Let's bring back my silicone mat. Don't lose the cake, Erica. Okay. 
I'm going to put another, I'm going to put an extra piece of tape on the end here so it doesn't move while I'm putting my last layer on. Let's put one more just to be safe over here. Okay. Am I off camera a tiny bit? No, I think we're still good. Okay, so let's... Did I cut this right? It's an eighth of an inch. It's just because it's the same color. It's really hard to see. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay, now this is going to fit nicely on here. Yeah, I like that bit of ribbon in there. What do you guys think? I think I like it. And I think I'm safe to glue this on because I'm going to uh, build my cake on here. And then I'm just going to do a real simple happy birthday. There's a lot of layering going on here. We've got the ribbon. We've got the printed paper. We've got the stitching. So I don't want to do a lot on here. And I may just do a real simple, oh good lord, I better do this first before I glue this just in case. Um... Yeah, let's do that. You should always stamp. Oh, I've already glued it on the back piece. Oh, well, we're going to have to just do it right the first time. Well, it's a photopolymer stamp. You can see right through it. So all should be well. And I think I'm still going to do black because I did black for the inside. So where's my memento? And let's do my black. I love the font on here. Let's find the center. Happy birthday. Okay, good. Phew! Phew, phew, phew. Okay. So, um, I might want another piece of tape on this side, too. Yeah, let's just put another little piece of tape right there. Okay, we're going to put this on like that. So far, so good, you guys. Made a few little boo boos, but I want you to learn from my mistakes. That's why I teach. And you will learn from your own mistakes. That's why you do. Okay, here's my little cake, and I want to make room for this little cake topper, which I'm going to actually, I'm going to um, stamp this directly on the card before I put the cake on. So let's figure out where it's going to go. I think there is good. Bunch of little flowers, so cute. Now, should the cake also go on a dimensional or not? This is always the question. Okay, where's my other cake plate? Just love this little cake plate. I don't think I'm going to put any dimensions on, to be honest with you. I think it looks good flat. We're going to go flat today. Oh my gosh, when was the last time I made a card with no dimensions on it? Dimensionals. I can't tell you when. Okay, and then our little cake plate. Now I'm going to do a little bit more glue on here. I could put that on dimensionals. Let me think. Oh, it's upside down. Don't do that. Now I'm going to do flat. It's kind of a flimsy piece. It's kind of a flimsy piece. Okay, don't. 
Oh, I haven't cut my ribbon. <laughs> it's on the roll still. Look at this. I have to cut my ribbon. I don't want to close my card. I have a dilemma here. I don't want to close my card because it's still gluey inside. Let's just go here. Oh, shoot. Careful, careful. And let's put that cake plate right there. Okay. I think all is good. All is good in the land of cake making. Okay. So I can cut my ribbon on the other side. Bring out my ribbon scissors. Let's get rid of that. Oh, geez, let's close my other ink pad. All right, let's see what's happening on the inside here. Is this dry? All right, let's take out my... Now, I have another glue eraser, but I can't find it anywhere. This is kind of a mucky one. And it's got... Yeah, anyway, it's what I've got. Hang on just a sec. I want to just look for my other glue eraser. It might be in this drawer, this little basket I have filled with all kinds of, I don't know, crap. Well, not really crap, but bits and bobs, I call it. Okay, I won't spend too much time. I'll just flip over a couple of things. I don't know what I did with... Oh, I know where it is. Ha <laughs> ha. I think it's in my takeaway crafting kit when I go to some craft event. There it is. The reason why I wanted to grab this was because it's clean. It's newer. This one's pretty grody and it might transfer onto my paper. So let's have this a go and see if I can get this glue off. Um, I will tell you that these erasers, Stampin' Up! used to sell them, but you can get them in the dollar store and you should have one. It's really good at taking off tape runner, but it's not so good at taking off, yeah, I'm making a big mess here. It's not so good at taking off Tombow. Yeah, this was a big mistake, but it's too late now. I think I need another piece of this paper. I don't even know if I have another piece. Let me just quickly, um, where is my paper? Did I put it back? No, I didn't put it back. Yeah, I really need to take this off. Um, I'm going to tell you about a really cool tool. You've probably heard it a thousand times, but we have this. It's called Take a Pick Tool. So it's got a stylus. I bought a couple of them because it's got this uh, putty end for picking up little rhinestones and stuff and sequins. Then it's got a pokey tool because we don't have the old, the old pokey tool anymore. But my favorite tool is the spatula. It's a very fine spatula, and so you can take off, I'm going to show you, you can take off your papers. It's, I've used it a, a hundred times, so if you're, if you put your DSP down or your cardstock down and it's crooked, this tool works great. Now, I'm taking this off, and I don't know that I have another piece of this color, so I don't know what I'm going to do. But that's really mucky under there, and it's it's going to interfere with the strip. See? Look at that. Yeah, look how mucky that is. I can't, I can't leave that on the card. Right? That's really yucky. Okay, let's throw that piece away. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to pause the video for a bit and see if I can find that paper. Hang on. So, unfortunately, I do not have any more of this color in the gingham. I have the color, but it's a different pattern. So, I really screwed myself by gluing that piece in the wrong spot, but I'm going to have to go with what I've got. Um, I can't see this. My life depends on which way does it go. I 
think it goes this way. Okay. Yeah, so don't make the mistake I made because it was a bad one. It was a bad one, you guys. But we're going to have to go with it. Okay. All right, let's get back to this part now. We're almost done. Thank you so much for hanging in. Um, okay, so we're going to fold that like that. So don't do the same thing as I just did. This is going to fold over like that, and this is going to fold over like this. So these are the pieces that you're actually going to be gluing. Okay, let me just pull in my bone folder and make sure these are straight. Okay, so what we're going to do is, again, you're going to center this. Try and center it with your ribbon. And um, we're going to back this off just a little bit. No, we're not, because we have to put this in the center. So you're going to close the card. Make sure that's in that crease like that. Hold it down. Pull this back. And this is where your glue is going. This is where your glue is going. like that. Okay, then you're going to do the same thing with this one. It's this end piece that you're going to flap over and you're going to put glue on here. And then fold it over. Because, essentially, you want this middle two panels to pop out. So, you don't want them glued down. My bad. My bad. See, you want this to pop out. Like that. So now you're going to reverse this. Like that. Okay. Okay. Now we can put our panels on. Now I just have to decide which cake goes where, and I don't think it really matters. We're going to put our cakes on like this, and we're going to put this cake on here like this, and then our greeting over here. I just said enjoy every crumb, or you could do this, and then put it here. I kind of like that. The um, This one I did it at the end. See, I did it at the end, but I think this one I'm going to put right here. Okay, now to put these on, you're just eyeballing the center, um, and you want them all to go on more. Uh, maybe, you know what, maybe I'll stagger mine this time. Let's do that. Let's stagger them. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of Tombow a little bit in the middle there and then I'm just going to let's see we'll do one down so if you st and put it in the middle of put it in the middle of the of this piece right and then if you if you stagger them then you can do you don't have to worry about lining them up along the top you could even do okay so I'm going to do this one higher so just a little bit of glue in the middle. And let's center that again between those two score lines. We'll do this one a little bit higher. And make sure it's straight. That's why I like Tombow. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, then we're going to do this one. You could even do, you know, two center ones up. 
whatever you like. Whatever floats your boat at the time you're designing. Maybe I'll do, no, I'm going to go down, up, down, up, down. Kind of like that. And I don't have to worry, I'm not even going to line it up with that one. Like, it doesn't really matter. But where's my other score line? There it is. That's what I want to center. Like that, and then the last one. So other than a few boo-boos that I made, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was... Um, I think this is the most complex fun fold that I've done. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got the idea. I hope you'll make one. Now, if you look on fa if you're on Facebook, you can look for me. Erica Edney, or you can look for uh, From Me to You Paper Crafts. I do have a Facebook business page. And um, so I post up there. And um, I think I did create another page. I should actually advertise that a little bit more. There's a group page where you can actually post things there. Because I would love to start seeing uh, what you make. Or you can just send me, um, send it to my email. Um, Erica Edney at Shaw.ca. You can send me your photos of the projects you make and then I can throw them up there for you. So look at that. Isn't that, it's actually turned out to be a stunning card if I do say so myself. I love my color combination. I don't know. I don't think the two different patterns, patterns really detract from one another because they are the same color. Oh, we didn't Oh my gosh, here, are, oh my gosh, look what I, <laughs> I could kill myself. Look what I did, you guys. Can you see that? My card is completely upside down. Oh, I'll never film at 4 o'clock in the afternoon again. Never, never, never. And I love this card. I'd like to make it again. But I don't have any more of that paper. Oh, I... <laughs> embarrassed you guys look at that oh I don't think I can fix it I don't think I can fix it because I used Tombow glue again under there <gasps> oh that's just tragic but you know I have a couple of really goofy friends <laughs> Maybe I could send it to them and they'll get a laugh out of it oh my gosh you know what it is what it is I I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry, but um, I promise I'm never going to film this time of the day again. I am kind of tired. I've had a big day, and um, it is what it is. So <laughs> I promise next week will be better. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll have every the details in my blog post. The link will be below the video. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye for now.